Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and in this video it's going to be aimed towards beginners and we're going to talk about loopback interfaces, specifically what they are, what they're used for, and how to create them. So it's for people who are just beginning on their Cisco certifications and one of the confusing things uh, I've seen you know, people ask is, okay, I, I don't really understand what a loopback interface is. It's kind of strange. So simply, a loopback interface is a fake interface we put on a router, and it's going to help us test things. It's going to help us uh, in administration purposes, like telenetting into a router to control it. And it's also going to be necessary for more complicated protocols like OSPF, uh, sometimes EIGRP, and BGP. So it's uh, it does a lot of things. So because it's a fake interface, it's not actually a, a physical port on the router. You don't see it, uh, but in terms of the router itself, it thinks it's it's alive and well. You could ping it, uh, you could put it into a routing protocol, uh, you could do pretty much anything you can uh, to it as if it was a regular interface. So let me demonstrate, and a lot of times in the PC world, in the PC tech support world, you've been told uh, or you've been asked, can you ping your own loopback address? And in PCs, if you've got a Windows machine, you could do that by going to your start menu, go to your command line, and you can ping in what's known as the IP loopback address, which is 127.001. And hopefully it should, it should ping back. What this means is this is a virtual interface, it's a virtual uh, IP address, and it goes back into your computer and it tests out your TCP IP stack. And uh, you'll be learning about the TCP IP stack in your CCNA and other Cisco studies. And what this means is you're just checking to see if TCP IP is working correctly. If you're not able to ping 127.001 on your PC, you've got some serious problems and you definitely can't access the internet. So, you know, it, it's a very low level test to see if there's more complicated problems. So we're gonna close that out. So here I've got a simple three router topology, R1, R2, R3. We've got the subnets 10.1.12x in between router one and two, 10.1.23x between two and three, and 10.1.13x between one and three. So the X means that if I'm on router one, I'd be giving the IP address 10.1.12.1. X represents the number of the router. And on this side, on the router 2 side, I'd be giving the address 10.1.12.2. Yep. So, like on router 3, we're going to be given an address of 10.1.23.3, because 3 is the number of the router. And on this side, between 1 and 3, it's 10.1.13.3. I haven't put in the loopback addresses just yet, but the addresses we're going to use is 1.1.1.1, 1.1.2.1, and 1.1.3.1 for router 3. And everything in this is going to be a slash 24. So let's create a loopback first on router 1. It's pretty easy. Go to router 1. I'm going to move my terminal window over here. Go into enable mode, then go to conf t. So the command is interface. Here we're going to type in int loop back zero. Okay, so does it matter what number we use for our loop back? Not really. If we type in loop back and then do a question mark, we can see that we have a wide range of numbers and this has to do with how things are kept track of internally in memory. Now each loop back does use a certain amount of memory uh, so you can't really create an infinite number but uh, yeah, you could create definitely create dozens, even hundreds of loopbacks if you wanted to. So here we're gonna do loopback zero, and then we're gonna. You can see the line protocol comes up, so the Cisco router automatically changes it to an up state. And if we hit the question mark, we could do quite a bit to this loopback interface because the router thinks it's uh, it's normal. It's, it's uh, like any other interface. So we'll give the IP address 1.1.1.1 and a mask of slash 24. Boom. Okay, so 
How do we know that we actually created it? You could actually do show IP in PR. You can see there we've got our fast Ethernet interface is already configured and now we've got our loopback interface. You could also do show int loopback zero. You can see here the loopback is up and up, hardware is loopback, we've got MTU on it, we've got uh, pretty big ba pretty big bandwidth there. Okay, we've got a delay, reliability, all this good stuff. And yeah, you know, it's it's up. So we're gonna create the loop back on router two. Comp T in loop back. Okay, here we could do loop back one. Doesn't really matter what we pick. IP address one dot one dot two dot one. Oop, gotta put in a mask. And there we go on router two. And on router three, enable conf t int loopback. Uh, here we'll do loopback zero. Give it an IP address of 1.1.3.1, 255, 255, 255, zero. And just verify that it's there. Show IP NPR, and we've got loopback zero. Now I've got uh, RIP running on all three routers, and I'm. we can see the RIP configuration by show run pipe s rip so that's going to show us the section just for rip so on all three routers we've got router rip version 2 network 000, no auto summary so what the network statement does here is it uh, throws everything into rip so as soon as we made all the loopback interfaces we can show IP route you can see here we've got routes to all of our loopback interfaces 1.1.1, 1.1.2, 1 1.1.3 .1 is connected on router 3, and we should be able to ping them just like any other interface. So if I'm on router 3, I could ping 1.1.1, and it works. Okay, so we know how to make the loopback interfaces. We know that we could basically make them any number. We could assign IP addresses to them. So really what good does it do us? I mean we could have pinged the fast Ethernet interfaces so we could ping 10.1.12.1 right that's the fast Ethernet 00, 0 interface on router 1. We can ping the 10.1.13.1 1. that's on the other side of the router 1 and router 3 link okay so in this case each router as I minimize my windows here, each router has two links going to it. Right? We've got two fast ether links going to router one, two fast ether links going to router one and uh, two, and two fast ether links going to router three. Our loop back here, since it's a fake interface, it's always going to be up. And as long as we have any link going to it, we should be able to ping it and administer it. So, as an example, if I'm on router 3, I don't actually have Telnet passwords or anything set up on these routers, but if I try to Telnet to router 1's loopback, I'm going to get a nice uh, error message, right? So it's it's trying it. Open means the it's accepting Telnet. However, since we haven't set a password, router 1's not going to take it. So I do have a video on how to uh, set up Telnet, but what we're going to do, we're just going to quickly go on router 1, Go to conf t line vty04. Right. Login and password Cisco. Okay, and that's that's how you set up Telnet or the base configuration. So we're going to go back on router three, hit the up arrow, try to Telnet again, Cisco, and I'm in. Right, exit out of there.